Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Charitram of Sri Adi Shankaracharya. Last episode we saw that Shivaguru went and uh, he met, he happened to meet uh, Sri Vedavyasa himself and then he came back home, right? Now there are two names of Lord Shiva from Rudram which just got stuck to his uh, head. He was constantly doing the japa of this unknowingly. It was just there on his in his head. These two names are Nama Kapardinecha, Vyupta Keshayacha. So these two names were constantly being repeated and because uh, and after that he just slept off. In his dreams again he had a darshan, this beautiful Kailasha Mala tree, uh, mountain which was filled with snow. It looked silvery and it was shining with a moon on its backdrop. It was really beautiful. Everything was shining. And there he saw Lord Shiva sitting in tapas. He was almost in a samadhi state. How did he look? He had this hair which was all matted up. His hair was uh, flying lightly in the breeze. It was a cool breeze. And then his forehead was smeared with basma or the white ashes. His eyebrows were nicely arched. His eyes were partially closed as if to remind us of the lotus petals. His entire body was in the color of gold, burnished gold, fresh gold. And then his neck was in the color of uh, was blue in color to remind us of the halahala vishim or the sacrifice that he did for us. His lips had that gentle smile as if he was in peace with himself and his cheeks were blushing with the joy that he was seeing himself in. So this is how his face looked and then we saw that the neck was blue. Now his shoulders were broad, his uh, chest was wide and on the neck and the shoulders were the Devanagas that were happily playing around. He was, uh, his, his hands were placed one on top of the other as if there were two lotuses that were stacked on top, one on top of the other. This was on his lap and his right uh, leg being down and his left foot on top of the right knee was how he was seated. Only his right toe was touching the ground and this was the position he was in and he was in deep tapas. I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cold. Uh, so, <clears throat> after this, he saw that there was this Shiva which, who had a lot of hair, who is uh, called the Kapardi nature, and a light emanated from him. And he saw the other Shiva without any hair, who is Vyupta Keshayacha. So, these two Shiva, uh, a light emerged from both the Shivas, and it traveled all the way. To a mountain where there was a shivalinga and they, it merged into that shivalinga. The deva from the devaloka he heard this voice calling that mountain Rishabachala. So in Risha, so he when he wakes up and he, he does all his anushtanams and everything, he goes to Rishabachala, uh, he goes to his wife and he tells him about his dream and everything, about how he met Vedavyasa what happened in his dream, the darshan that he had and all of it. Then he goes to some vanikas or business travellers and asks them about Rishabachala. He asks, have you heard of this place called Rishabachala? Now this Rishabachala in today's age is called Trishur. It used to be called Tirashiva Perur. From there it became Trishur. <coughs> So he learned about this place and he and his wife looked up a good date and they went uh, uh, and they proceeded on their journey to this Rishabachana. Once they went to the temple there, they took bath in Purna Nadi which was behind the temple itself. At that time Purna Nadi was also running behind that temple. So they took bath over there and then and then uh, they would stay in the neck deep water to that extent and they would do the japa of Shivanama. After that, after finishing all their prayers, they would come into the temple. They would stay inside the temple itself for how many ever days and then consume fruits 
and the prasada that was given in the temple and the entire day would be uh, you know spent thinking of shiva or seeing all the rituals of the temple and uh, you know so so on and so forth so many days rolled by when they were, uh, when the couple was doing only this one night shiva again came in their dreams and shiva asked them he uh, asked him shiva guru he vipra which means he brahmana what is it that you want why do you do such a great tapas so then uh, shiva guru says i would like to have a son please bless me with a son <clears throat> so shiva asks i have two uh, options for you a son who will live a, live a very long life but will be okay okay in character will be will not be very knowledgeable in all that but i can give you one son who is very good in knowledge who is the best of men who is the best among men and uh, you know uh, but will live a very short life which kind of a son would you choose so shiva guru says give me the son who is a, who is the best among men and therefore shiva says so be it and he says you may now go back home with your wife so after that shiva guru spent the entire night uh, keeping awake and doing dhyana mon shiva in the meanwhile at the same time aryamba had a vision in her dream where a light came into her body a light entered her body that was the darshan that aryamba had so after having this darshan both of, ha, after having this darshan both of them went back to their home when they went home aryamba learned that she was pregnant and she started seeing these amazing auspiciousness like for instance she will have a darshan of shiva on a bull in her dream or she'll have the darshan of all the uh, you know uh, sapta rishis she'll have darshan of suddenly rishis coming home so this uh, whether she was sleeping or whether she was awake she would have these kind of darshans a similar thing is what used to happen to devaki when she was in the jail with uh, krishna in her home she would have darshan of brahma she would have darshan of the devas she would have darshan of rishis she would be glowing she would be effulgent Same, uh, likewise was the case with aryamba devi <coughs> in the third month they did a ritual called pumsavanam and in the sixth month they did something called simantornayanam so these two rituals were duly performed and in the 10th month uh, in the 10th month they had uh, this baby was about to be born i'll just tell you the so it was the karkata lagnam it was the vishakh masam or vaishakh masam or karkata lagnam the day was shukla pa, shukla panchami and the star was punarvasu so on these auspicious when all these auspicious uh, things came together is when shri adi shankara was born shiva guru was actually chanting rudra rudram shri rudram while he was uh, you know while aryamba was going through her labor the midwife brought the child and said we have this child who is glowing like gold and <clears throat> you have a son saying that she brought it to uh, shri uh, shivaguru and shivaguru was just then chanting the nama shri shankaraya cha so in his mind he had already named this little child shankara what does the word shankara mean shankara means sa- the one who can bestow peace and bliss in us is shankara thus our adi shankara was born he who has no birth no death and who is out of all kinds of duality was now born on earth to give us the joy of peace and bliss i hope you all enjoyed this episode ah uh-huh. i'll going to give you a little bit of trivia this place where aryamba and shivaguru went and prayed this temple is called uh, trishur vadakunnanadan trishur is the place vadakunnanadan is the temple's place and the shiva's uh, name this uh, the purana of the temple says that parashurama installed the, uh, this shivalinga over there as he installed there was a huge um, 
uh, Bukampa that happened. So in order to make peace with the uh, earth and the Bukampa and everything, he started doing uh, Abhisheka with ghee instantly. As he started doing the Abhisheka uh, with ghee, the, uh, you know, the Bhumi became calm. Shiva also became calm over there. Even today when you go there, you will see that there is constant Abhisheka of ghee which is being done. So much so that you will not be able to see the Shivalinga itself. The prasada which is given is, uh, is ghee over there. And then <coughs> the best part is the ghee does not melt and drip. A place like Kerala where it can be very hot and humid and in a place in the Garbhagraha especially it's very hot with all the lamps which are lit not a drop of ghee comes down uh, comes melting down. Such is the beautiful temple of Vadakundanathan. Uh, if anybody is going you will find the link to the temple, the pin to the temple below in the description. Please go visit Vadakunanathan as well. This is very close to Gurvayur. Most of us know Gurvayur temple. So that is the reason why I am mentioning this. Please go visit this temple as well. I hope you all enjoyed this. Please subscribe to my channel. Like the video so that uh, YouTube understands that it can be shared with more people. And do share it with your friends and relatives. Thank you.